original Quake has finally been remastered for modern consoles. It's out now on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation digital stores. It's looking better than ever, and today we're going to be taking a look at the features and enhancements that they've added to this version of Quake. But first, let me just say, there's something cozy about playing this game on the Nintendo Switch. It's portable and you can bring it places. In theory, it can be a social thing, and I love that about the Switch. I mean, check this out. This was a 24-hour cyber cafe, as they called them, in 1996 called Internet Alfredo. Imagine gathering the space with friends or even just heading there by yourself, grabbing a coffee or a beer, and playing Quake with other like-minded individuals. I mean, even Nintendo sells that dream in their commercials where people are playing NBA 2K on the rooftops with all their friends. I know, I know, I get super nerdy about this. Anyway, let's talk about Quake. A quick recap if you're new to the series. After pushing the limits with the massively successful Doom in 1993 and Doom 2 in 1994, id Software went back to the drawing board. In 1996, Quake was released, and it had quite a few advancements over Doom. Doom wasn't fully 3D and had some limitations. The enemies, weapons, and objects were really just pre-drawn 2D sprites, photos instead of 3D models. And the level design was limited because the Doom engine had this limitation where you couldn't have rooms over other rooms, so it wasn't truly a full 3D experience. Quake, on the other hand, was a fully 3D game that looked much more realistic and didn't have any of those limitations that Doom had. Quake's fully 3D maps also allowed for a swimming mechanic. Many of the levels have you diving into murky waters, fighting off angry fish and zombies. Quake is faster paced than Doom and can get extremely challenging at times. The enemies are brutal and they come at you in numbers. Not only that, but the platforming can be frustrating when you need to be super precise and it does have a quick save and quick load feature that you might want to use generously as you play. Thankfully, this version also has a level select, so if you get stuck in a certain area and you just want to move on, you can. There's a really cool weapon wheel feature that lets you cycle through the weapons. It's a really cool modern day feature that they've added in this port. And as you hold the weapon wheel button, the action around you slows down. Quake's lighting always looked good for its time, but it's really been brought up to modern standards here. You can play Quake in high resolution, you could turn on anti-aliasing to get rid of those jagged edges. There's even depth of field and motion blur effects. I swear, I must be the only person on Earth who likes motion blur. Okay, now I finally know how to answer that question prompt on dating profiles. What's your most unpopular opinion? I like motion blur in video games. <laughs> and of course, it still has that incredible soundtrack by Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. You know the one. da na na da na 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 Da -na -da -na -na -na. Okay, I'm a little tone deaf, I'm sorry. I also remember being able to play that disc, the actual Quake disc, in a CD player and hearing the tracks. It was a different time, you had to be there. Quake Remastered has support for up to four player split screen and you can also have up to eight bots. I really hope they go back and add bots to the Doom port. It has online play with cross-play with up to eight players. So you could be on your Switch and be playing against people on their Xbox, playing against people on their PS4, and I love that. That's the future of gaming, but I refuse to pay for the technologically bare-bones Nintendo Switch Online. I will not pay a cent for that anymore, especially with the new Nintendo 64 expansion pass that's $50 a year. Are you kidding me? No. So basically, no, I couldn't test it on the Switch. I played with bots and I had a great time. I did, however, test it on the Xbox Series X and I had a great time with the online. It was really easy to find a match. There was no lag, it just was complete chaos. There's just nothing like trading rockets with others and getting blown up by one of your own. A few months after launch, the developers added a brand new horde mode to Quake. It's kind of hard to find. It's actually hidden in the multiplayer menu. Horde mode can be played either alone with bots, split screen with friends, or online. It's your basic survival mode where you fight off waves of enemies with tons of weapons and bonuses to pick up along the way. It's a lot of fun if you're into those types of modes like I am. And don't forget, buried deep in the menus, you can change your shirt and pants color. Nowadays, you'd have to pay $20 for the Quake Battle Pass. Quake Remastered includes the original expansion packs from back in the day, Scourge of Armagon and Disillusion of Eternity. If I pronounce those wrong, don't at me. 
But they've also included two new expansions, Dimension of the Past and Dimension of the Machine. The expansions look awesome and have a bunch of new high-res textures that really give Quake a modern look. They don't follow the same dark, gritty, gothic style that the original Quake episodes had. They try something new and it's refreshing to see, especially Dimension of the Machine. The shadows in the first level alone look like a whole different game. Like, it looks like a modern game. And the cherry on top, there's gonna be new level packs and mods to download, just like the Doom ports. The Quake modding community was absolutely massive, and I'm excited to see what Bethesda ends up releasing. I even remember playing this James Bond Tomorrow Never Dies mod back in the day, and it was listed directly on the official Tomorrow Never Dies site. So it was officially sanctioned by James Bond. I mean, not Bond himself, like Pierce Brosnan was not like, my name is Pierce Brosnan, and I have lost my accent for some reason, and I approve this mod. At only $9.99 in the US, I think this game is a steal. And if you have Xbox Game Pass, it's on there for free. It's a piece of 90s gaming history, and if you have a little bit of patience, you'll be able to get through it. Night Dive Studios did an incredible job here, and I really hope that we're able to see ports of the other games in the Quake series in the future.